In this portion of our coverage of advanced rules on organic nomenclature, we will try to discuss scenarios wherein we have to name compounds with two or more principal groups. You see, when we were trying to name the simpler compounds, especially those with only one principal group, the instruction is very clear that you need to suffix the principal group. But what if we have two or more? Clearly, you cannot suffix all of them, and only one will still remain in the suffix. So how do you determine which is which? This is a table that I want to show you, a partial one at least, that shows the most common functional groups, principal groups we have used for many cases before, and this is arranged by rank or hierarchy. Meaning, for example, we have here carboxylic acids, they have the highest rank of all, followed by aldehydes, then ketones, then alcohols, then thiols, then amines. So let's say you have a compound that is both an aldehyde and an alcohol, I don't know, just a situation like that. In those cases, you will have to use the suffix al, and to indicate the presence of OH in the same compound, you use the prefix hydroxy. Or let's say you have a ketone that is an amine. You will still use the suffix own because the ketone has the higher rank, and since amines are of lower rank, instead of being suffixed, they will now be prefixed as amino. So let's have more concrete examples here where we can practice this principle. So here, as always, our first thing to do is to identify the parent. That's very easy. We have four carbons without any double or triple bond. So that's butan. And then here we have the conflict between OH and NH2. So as you see here, in terms of ranking, OH is higher ranking than NH2. So that means we will stick with the suffix all. And of course, we will be biased in numbering towards this OH, giving this the lower number. So that means we start here as 1. This would be 2. So that's butan to all. And therefore, we have this NH2 at number 3. So therefore, we have to use the prefix amino for that. So we write this properly as 3 amino. So in 86, we follow the same principle, identify the two functional groups, then compare their ranks. This one, RCOR, is a ketone, and this is simply an alcohol. So between an alcohol and a ketone, ketones are of higher rank, so that means you will use the suffix on here. Then, probably the parent chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no carbon-carbon double bond, so pentanone. Although, of course, since ketones can be found anywhere inside the chain, you have to indicate the number. So it's better to start here, such that we give the ketone group number 2. And therefore, that also means that our OH here will be placed at number 4. And the prefix for OH, remember, is hydroxy based on this table. So we will write this that thing properly as 4-hydroxy. So this is the name of this compound. For 87, and this is interesting, you still have the same ketone here, right, as with 86. But now, look that the ketone is partnered with carboxylic acid or the carboxyl group, which now is of higher rank than a ketone. So this time, instead of using the ketone suffix, we will use the oic acid suffix, simply because priorities, right? So we have a four-carbon parent, so that means we specifically have here butanoic acid. And now, in order to indicate this ketone group, which we used to suffix a while ago, we will now use the prefix for this, which is oxo. And that's at number 3, right? So that's 3-oxo-butanoic acid. That's the name of this entire compound. Now, let's go to cyclic examples. And here, I don't need to discuss anymore how to assign the proper locants. That's something of, of fundamental rules, really. So in 88, we know that we assign number 1 to the highest ranking functional group. So we, we have here ketone, alcohol, and thiol. So between those three, or among those three, ketones win. So that means we give this number 1, and we, we have no choice but to give this 2, 3, and this is number 4. So since this is also the highest ranking substituent or principal group, we will give the suffix or we will use the suffix own once again. 
Specifically, the parent here is cyclohexane, so we have here the parent cyclohexanone. And at 2, we have an OH, the prefix for that is hydroxy. For SH, this, uh, the prefix is mercato. So, we write all of that as 2 hydroxy for mercato cyclohexanone. And of course, as always, pay attention to the alphabetization of the prefixes. 89, we just follow the same principle. The principal groups here are double bond and OH. And OH is a fire ramp, so we give this number 1. Then we give this the next smaller number, so we go in this direction, not the, not the other way around. So we go here, 2, 3. That means our chlorine is at 4, and this methyl group is at 5. So the parent chain is cyclohexane once again. Well, not necessarily cyclohexane, cyclohexene wherein the in or the double bond is at number 3. And since the OH is at number 1, that's what we do not need to give a locant for. And then don't forget, we have a 4-chloro here, as well as a methyl at number 5. And of course, as always, we pay due uh, attention to the alphabetization of the prefixes. Then finally, 90, what do we have here? Bromine. Uh, remember that halogens are always low priority. They're not even principal to start with. Then we have here amino. I actually lack one hydrogen here. So we have an amino group. And then here, I hope it's very clear to you now that this is an aldehyde. So the, between an amine and an aldehyde, by a large margin, the aldehyde will be our suffix. Because it's a fire ramp, so we will use the suffix al. Specifically, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon. So that's pent. Then there's no carbon-carbon double bond. So I could just casually put an. Remember, you don't need to put number 1 here because aldehydes and terminal functional groups will always be at carbon number 1. And 1, 2, 3, 4, we have two functional groups of 4, amino and bromo. And remember, we need to write them in alphabetized order. So that's A first before B, right? So that's 4 amino, 4 bromo, so that's alphabetized, pentanol. So I hope that you got the idea with the examples that we have here. And it's not really rare to see cases like these, especially when we deal with a lot of, of, of compounds, especially actual compounds like drugs or natural products.